everybody. So I'm um, here having my dinner at the uh, Nature or Natural Cafe, Nature's Grill, which when I used to live in this area in Santa Barbara was called the Natural Cafe. I was delighted to find it because it was one of my favorites. It was in Santa Barbara at the time, but now there's one here in Ventura. And this is my favorite meal, the Yogi Special, which is grilled tofu on uh, brown rice with uh, salad and tahini dressing. It's a real winner. The place where I'm working, Ventura City Hall, is just up one street up. I went up and visited it and uh, ran into my, uh, the uh, city, finance and information and, and city finance and technology manager while I was there. There was a Santa Claus out there and a woman asked me if I wanted to see Santa. And as I fumbled the response, I uh, heard a voice say, this is Kurt Bell, our new IT project manager. So it's nice to have a welcome. Got to meet the family and all. That's very nice. But anyway, as I get started on my meal, I wanted to tell you what the game plan is. Not necessarily for tomorrow. I start tomorrow. Tomorrow would probably be mostly about orientation and getting settled, right? But I don't plan to uh, let any moss grow on uh, this particular stone. But how does one start a new ITO, from uh, I, uh, PMO, a project management office, or project management organization, depending on how you roll? How does one start one from scratch? Well, I've only done it once before. And I did it from within an organization that I was a, a part of. I was part of the family. And so I was able to do it, as Frank Sinatra would say, my way. <laughs> now, it's different now. I'm coming into a new organization with a lot more responsibility. How does one do that? How does one in, bring into an, orga an organization a new methodology and a new practice, new processes, new documentation set, the whole kit and caboodle? without ruffling feathers, you know, upsetting precedent, or disrupting current projects underway. Well, it's a gradual affair. So I'm gonna lay out for you now my initial plan of action, which is basically just a few things. First and foremost, after I get settled, that should be no more than 48 hours, you know, 24 hours would be even better, 12 hours would be even better, you know, half a day orientation and get underway. Um, First thing I need to do is I need to know, even though I'm assuming responsibility for all of the IT projects, as the PMO office will, I need to know what are the initial projects that are underway or that are coming up that I really need to get a handle on right away. And I've already got that checked off because the uh, technology manager um, sent me the list of projects. And it's just a handful, but still a handful can be a lot. Um, the next step after that is once I've identified what my initial target is, you know, my initial, so I'll be developing the dashboard in the project management toolkit that I have, the Q2PM dashboard. In the dashboard, I'll be laying out those projects and then adding to those over time, incrementally creating the portfolio that we'll have for our projects. Now, I've checked that off already as well. So I know what the projects are and I've already added them into the dashboard. Now it is granted my proprietary SharePoint Online uh, tenant that I have for my own purpose, for this very purpose, so that I can manage things outside the scope of an organization that I have not yet joined. This was the whole idea all along, was to be able to come into a municipality uh, like this and to be able to begin building the project management office from scratch. Now, I don't want to have a two week or a three week or a one month ramp up period. That's not, that's not, that's simply not in the works. And I won't. So I'll initially begin, I will actually be able to lift the computer on day one and show my manager, this is your dashboard for the projects that you've identified for me so far. And I've got the details, I was able to get enough details to lay out the uh, deliverables, the uh, team members, um, all those details are in there now. Now, I'm not as clear, and I'm coming to the third item in just a second here. I'm not as clear on all the scope items. This is the sensitive part. This is the delicate part. So let's just recap real quick. Coming in on day one, got to tooth go through my orientation, got to be shown my workspace, got to be given my equipment, got to ramp up. With, within very short order, I will, as I said, open my screen, show to my manager, here's what I've, you've identified for me are the top pri priority projects in, in, in route or coming up, you know, in process or coming up. Here they are, I've got them on the dashboard, all the, all, the, all the information is in there. The next step is, and this is the sensitive step, what promises have been made already? The reason that this is sensitive, okay, no, back up just a bit. 
Why is that important? The promises that have been made are essentially the scope that has been identified. Um, scope, of course, is, is the things that are, we're going to do for a particular project. Now, in the Q2 Prium methodology using our phase project charter, we definitely outline exactly and very precisely what is within scope and what is without scope, what is outside of scope, within the project proposal section of the document. Now coming into a, a new organization where I don't have the benefit of having created that document, I'm going to have to go on what other people have promised. And so I'm going to ask, and, I, and this is where I do this in basically a non-critical manner. I say, for each of the projects in turn, I, I need to know what was promised. Now hopefully there's a charter, and I know there are in some cases, but charters are different things. Charters have, like all, so many things, language has, has, has definitions, right? So um, probably the charter doesn't look like the charter that I want. Not that mine's better, but maybe theirs is better. But it be, it, I'll have to reconcile that. I'll have to look through the charter, figure out what the scope items are for each of the projects, bring them into my methodology, lay them out into the, um, into the uh, timeline, or not the timeline, but the, but the milestone, the work breakdown structure, and, uh, and begin, once I have those in place and I have defined what they are, Uncritically, for, oh, for the most part, I'll begin executing on those right away. See where they stand, start start getting status reports on those items. In addition, I need to know any issues that are currently being tracked, risks, changes, decisions that haven't been made. And I think I'll have the benefit of the existing project manager who uh, will be around th through the middle of January. So that's going to be very helpful. Again, it's in some ways, it's, it's transitioning that information out of their, another system into my system and, and getting that in, in a state that I can work with. Now, again, I have to keep other people's promises, which I'm not necessarily comfortable doing. Right? I like to keep my own promises because I don't know what kind of promises other people made. I don't know. Were they good promises? I don't know. But I hope they were. You know, and if they, if they weren't, then I deal with that fact. Or maybe the, and maybe the thinking that they aren't is just my fault. Maybe I don't get it. In which case, I have to work harder with the team to understand the the promises that are made. I'm coming into these sometimes with technologies that I don't necessarily know very well, um, even though I've done my research uh, on the technologies as much as I can to that. It, some of it requires you have to get through a paywall to actually learn more about the applications. Um, but you can learn about a lot of stuff out there on just a new Google search or with a research organization like Gartner. So once I've got that, so let's recap real quick. I'll have to identify what the projects are. Check, got that in. I have to identify, uh, get, the, get those laid out into my infrastructure, check, I got that in place. Three, I'll have to identify what promises I've made, what are the scope items for those projects, for, the, for the, each of the projects, and what are the dates associated with those? What are the deliverables, basically? And I don't have that yet. I do for to a degree. I was able to take out from some of the documents I got, I found what I think I identified are some scopes items, and I've laid them in. Um, I want to verify that that's the case. It's got to be complete. That's the whole thing. That is everything about a project, right? Is what are you, well, what's the problem you want to solve? What promises have been made to solve that problem? And then we begin executing against that. Once those are in place, and I've also identified the issues, risks, changes, and decisions that are in route or pending, then, and extract any historical information, I can add that in as well. What historical decisions were made, if I, if I can find those. Then I will basically begin to have a project that's kind of you know pretty well formed. I'm like an adventurer guide that's taking up a party midstream through the wilderness, right? And they have a plan to go to the Adirondacks or something like that. And and here's how they plan to do it. They plan to be in, in St. Louis by September 6th or whatever, right? It's my job to get them there. I didn't have a hand in making that plan, but I got to get them there. Now, you got to do that in a way that not make waves too much. It's okay to make good waves if they're if it's worthwhile, but with a little bit of effort. You can do this in such a way as to not make enemies, and that's a big challenge to do because um, we're all in this together. The promises that were made, in every case that I found, were made typically on, uh, on good merit and good intentions, right? Sometimes there's not a complete clear picture. Sometimes we have a project, we want to do a problem, we want to solve, and we jump right into it without seeing the whole package picture. So. Um, if that's the case, then I'll try to round that out and, and add that information in as, more, as a helpful way as I can. But I, uh, for the most part, I think I'm pretty good at, at, at making friends in, along the way and not enemies. Um, because I know that people come, basically, if, uh, come to things, most of us are doing things with the best of intentions. Um, if, there's, if we disagree, it's because we either misunderstand or we're not communicating well. And I struggle and I strive to work on both of those. 
And once that's underway, we have projects. And I'll execute on those projects, and I'll I will refine them. Now, the projects that I inherit, I'll probably have some speed bumps along the way, as I said, largely because I'm new. Um, large, maybe in part because maybe the promises that were made weren't the best promises. I don't know. Maybe they were. Again, maybe it's a learning curve for me. But anyway, we'll, we'll get through that. It's, it's not a problem. Where we have virtue, where we, not virtue, that's not the right word, where we have opportunity to, to do things. I don't want to say do right or virtue. That, why don't I come up with these terms? That's not what I mean at all. And I'm not trying to say that the process that I have is the virtuous good process. It's, it's the only thing that, that, that is the, the thing that I really focus on my process is, is that upfront strong effort to really define the business problem, to understand what is it that's keeping people up at night, that, that if we could solve that problem, it would help them to sleep at night. That's really the only thing that I, I think in some ways distinguishes this process um, from others. And as I have new projects that come down the pike, I'll be able to do that, that upfront due diligence that really makes a difference, I believe. And again, I'm not sliding anybody else's methods or plans or way, ways that they do it. We get, we get to these goals I can use the, the word of virtue because working in the public sector, we're trying, we're seeking after virtuous ends. I, we get at those through different different methodologies, and it's just a matter of reconciling those. But now I have a chance to uh, bring the Q2PM methodology to the city of Ventura, right behind me, but not before I have my yogi special, and not before I uh, wish you all well, and I hope I, you wish me well as I begin work tomorrow as the uh, city's new uh, information technology project manager. Take care, everybody. And let's make every meeting matter. Now it's time for dinner. Take care. <laughs>